Good morning, school. This morning's presentation is by the Humanities Department. We are going to touch on an interesting topic which is very relevant to you. Please read through the slides now. Do you think the information presented is true? How can you tell? Did you find it funny or interesting? Would you share it for laughs? Are you going to share this to show the dangerous implications? Or should you just ignore it and get on with your life? This information that we just looked at is spread on the internet. This online news is spread by QAnon. And as you see from the picture, QAnon has many followers and they come out in public. So what is QAnon? Watch the video to find out. So to keep it incredibly simple, QAnon is a conspiracy theory that started on 4chan with a post from 2017 by a user called QClearance Patriot. In this post, entitled Calm Before the Storm, the user claimed to be a high-level insider within the Trump administration, supposedly having Q-level clearance, granting them access to top-secret restricted data. With this information, Q claimed that he'd learned about a secret battle playing out between President Donald Trump and a global paedophile ring. In Q's subsequent nearly 5,000 posts, he lays out the whole story, claiming that a number of high-profile figures are part of this paedophile cabal, including Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton, George Soros, Tom Hanks, Ellen DeGeneres, Oprah Winfrey, the Dalai Lama, and even Pope Francis. The claims about these people are pretty wild. Not only do they accuse that these people are part of the paedophile network, but believers also claim that they're cannibals who like to eat children in order to gain life-extending powers from their blood. Now, I hope this goes without saying, but for legal purposes and for the sake of clarity, let me quickly note, there's absolutely no evidence that any of these things are true, likely because they're not true. We're merely explaining what this theory states, and we aren't suggesting that any of this is accurate, or validating the theory in any way. After watching the video, you may wonder, why do people still believe such information, and why is QAnon gaining popularity despite presenting such bizarre information? Nowadays, most people resort to alternative sources of information for news, and they may not cross-reference or cross-check the news that they come across with. Another reason could also be due to the upcoming 2020 United States presidential election and the interest people have in the information pertaining to the election, namely the presidential campaign of Donald Trump. As seen previously, QAnon has latched itself to information on prominent politicians to gain attention. However, what other reasons could have led to its spread? Let's watch the clip to find out more. How did this insane theory take off? Well, partly, it latched onto fears about the real phenomenon of human trafficking. Partly, it fed off ancient anti-Semitic tropes about elitists who drink the blood of children. But mostly, it was just the good old internet. QAnon first emerged in the months after President Trump took office, starting on fringe internet message boards before spreading to social media. The pandemic has only made things worse. And so these people are just there all day. Facebook groups have grown exponentially with QAnon. In just four months, membership of the biggest public QAnon groups 
rose by 700%. We saw a lot of groups who were wellness communities, people who were interested in alternative health. People would, uh, the algorithm would sort these people together with the QAnon people. They would say, oh, alternative health, maybe they're into anti-vax. If they're anti-vax, maybe they're into Donald Trump. And within one or two clicks, people would go down these very bad paths. Yep. Eye-catching and interesting news makes people want to click and read about it. This is known as clickbait. Some of you may be guilty of forwarding it to your friends, family, and classmates. In addition, algorithms on websites, search engines, and social media have helped to push information to you. Have you noticed that when you go onto YouTube and watch a video, when it ends, there's another similar video waiting to be played? That's how algorithms feed similar information to the same audience. Can you find the QAnon member in the picture? If this law enforcement member believes in QAnon theories, could he use his position to support QAnon? Would that be a problem for other members in society? Here are some other impacts of QAnon advocates. But the scary thing about QAnon is what happened when it jumped from the screen to the streets. This is not just a bunch of online crazy talk. It's dangerous in real life. The FBI says QAnon and their many conspiracy theories are a potential domestic terrorism threat. The North Carolina man who shot up this DC pizza restaurant looking for non-existent pedophiles believed in similar theories. On more than one occasion, people believed to be followers of QAnon have shown up, sometimes with weapons, in places that the character told them were somehow connected to anti-Trump conspiracies. In June, a man armed with a rifle and a handgun drove an armored vehicle to the Hoover Dam on what he said was a mission from QAnon. Q on followers have allegedly been involved in a foiled presidential assassination plot, a devastating California wildfire, and armed standoff with local law enforcement officers in Arizona. In July, a 24-year-old man was charged in the shooting death of a reputed mob boss. His attorneys argued he was motivated by QAnon. Written on his hand in the courtroom were QAnon symbols. As a response, in July this year, Twitter and Facebook have taken action to shut down accounts linked to QAnon. This won't make QAnon disappear on the internet, but it'll have an impact in reducing the spread of information by QAnon. You heard the news report about the increase in people clicking on QAnon news. The internet has allowed information to spread very quickly and widely. Not all information is checked, and not all information is accurate. How can we protect ourselves from misinformation? How can we help ourselves avoid fake news? First, we should fact check information that come from dubious sources. Have you ever fallen victim to online falsehoods or even shared them on social media and online messaging platforms? This is potentially harmful as it could misinform and cause unnecessary confusion among the public. To stay vigilant against the spread of false information, here are four steps to be sure. Step one, check the source of the information that you receive and make sure that it is credible and reliable. For example, if you receive a message regarding food and health, check if there is a website link provided. It may be harder to verify its credibility if no clear source is given. Similarly, on social media platforms, check the post's origin and see if it is an authentic web source. Some fake news originate from dubious web sources that imitate official websites by adding in an extension to the web address. For example, a fake post about a food and health scare may imitate the website address of an official health organization in order to trick readers. Step 2. Understand the information that you read online. With social media and messaging apps, people can express and share their opinions on various matters, exposing us to a lot of information and perspectives which may mislead us. Therefore, it is important to understand the difference between factual information and opinions in the posts we receive, as well as respecting everyone's views. Some fake news are vague in their details and lack factual information. They may not provide any time or date, nor links to other official sources to confirm the information. They may also use photos or videos from other incidents to trick us. If you receive messages or posts with these characteristics, treat them with suspicion. Step 3. 
Research using credible sources to find out the authenticity of an article or message you receive. Dig deeper and go beyond the initial source. A simple step is to do a quick search of any suspicious article or message you receive. If there is no evidence or lack of news coverage to confirm the information, it is best to treat it with suspicion. That is why we should investigate thoroughly before making a conclusion. It is best to find at least two or more sources to confirm if the information is real. However, keep in mind that some online falsehoods may take some time to be debunked. Step 4. Evaluate the information you receive from different angles. Find the balance and exercise fair judgment. Before you choose to share or forward information, exercise fair judgment and consider if the headline or media may be manipulated. Some online falsehoods are created by using photographs or videos with misleading headlines. They can be used to incite negative reactions from the online community. Therefore, it is important to evaluate any information you receive as they may not reflect the actual incident. Anyone can fall victim to online falsehoods, but you don't have to be the one. By being sure, you will be able to discern information better and help people around you too. So always remember to check your information. Be sure before you share. After watching the video, you should be aware of some ways to conduct basic fact checks on dubious online information. Going to the agencies, organization, or ministry websites to check on related information. For example, the Ministry of Health website on health advice for illnesses. You can also upload the information on some fact checking websites. Local ones include Black Dot Research Fact Check and Sure or Not. For international news, you can check through websites like BBC Reality Check, Reuters Fact Check, and AFP Fact Check. Important news are often reported at multiple sources. Besides going to individual news websites, news aggregators give you an overview of the news showcasing multiple news websites such as Google News. Press Reader is another database that provides free access to many world-leading newspaper and magazines. For images, Videos that you receive from friends and relatives, you can also conduct reverse image search to check that their videos have not been digitally changed. You can take screenshots of the video or enter the URL and check them through Google reverse image search. Remember, check that the information is accurate before you share. Be a reliable source of information. I hope that with this presentation, you would be able to differentiate between conspiracy theories and facts. We hope that you enjoyed this snippet of current affairs and have spurred you on to make better choices. Thank you school and hope you have a great day ahead.